Hey guys, today I want to share with you guys some of the settings that I personally change on my brand new iPhones when I first set them up. There's a few settings that are enabled by default and some that are turned off by default. One of the first settings I like to change is under general, accessibilities, display accommodations, and auto brightness. Auto brightness to me doesn't work as I always want it to. So if it's in a lighter environment, it's always a little darker than I wish it was or a little brighter than I wish it was. So I like to just manage the brightness myself. So auto brightness is one of those toggles that I turn off. And by the way, it's being relocated. So again, it's gonna be under general, accessibilities, display accommodations, auto brightness. Another setting I like to change is under general, accessibilities, and speech. Now, speak selected. When I enable this, if I go to an article or something that I'm reading online, and I just want Siri to read it to me, I can tap and hold, and I get a new bubble. You see this bubble here, speak, create an iPhone that is entirely screen. Now some of you may know about this, but some of you may not, but I like Siri sometimes to just read articles, things to me as I'm busy doing other things. It also works in messages. Someone sends you a message. You can't really uh, have time to read it. Just, Amen, what you know, just have Siri read it out to you. I really use this feature a lot. If there's a settings on the iPhone that drives me crazy and it's the first thing I turn off every time I update or every time I get a new iPhone, it's gonna be under keyboard and autocorrect. The autocorrect function on the iPhone, I just completely, completely dislike because it just it gets it wrong most of the time for me. And it just gets annoying. It changes words for me as I'm texting. I end up texting the wrong thing most of the time. So autocorrect is a must that I turned off on the iPhone when I first set it up. And one thing I do enabled on the keyboard right away is the enable dictation. So dictation here will allow you, of course, to use the little microphone on the bottom right in order to just kind of have the iPhone type what you're saying. Now the next thing I want to share with you guys is super useful and it's called Keychain. It's going to be under your iCloud settings. If you don't have this enabled by default, I recommend you enable it. Now Keychain is basically all your passwords in one single account directly on your iPhone across all your iPhones that are set up or all Apple devices that are set up with the same Apple ID including your Mac. Now this feature would just simply remember any social network passwords, any website passwords and save them encrypted on your device and then when you go to log into those websites in the future on a newer iPhone or a newer Mac, it will remember. So for example, if I go developer portal, which I go often, it's gonna ask me for the password and username. See there, face ID enables, it auto fills. That's gonna be keychain that's doing that. The only way that it auto fills that information with keychain is with two settings enabled. Keychain, which will remember, use Touch ID on a Touch ID device to authenticate or Face ID on a Face ID device in combination with Safari autofill. So you want to go to Safari as well and enable the autofill option. This option will autofill your name, passwords, usernames, credit card information and everything. Again, encrypted and authenticated by Touch ID or your face. Now one thing I never understood is every time I set up a new iPhone under messages, the tab send as SMS is always turned off. Now you may want to turn this on and carrier rates will apply if you don't have uh, unlimited messages, but this send us SMS means if your iMessage isn't available at the time, the message will get there as an SMS message, as a text message. Unlike if you turn it off, the iPhone will wait until iMessages connect and then it will send it. Unless, of course, it's not another iPhone, then it'll just send as SMS automatically. But I like to enable this because any SMS message that I sent, I wanted to get there whether iMessage is available at the moment or not. I'm not constantly checking if iMessage is available on the other person's end. So SMS, send us SMS, a very important option that I think you guys should really have enabled. Another option that you guys should really consider if it's available for your carrier in your area is going to be Wi-Fi calling. Now, Wi-Fi calling to set it up is very easy. It's all going to depend on your carrier, but I highly recommend you set it up because when you're connected to Wi-Fi, your calls are crystal clear and then they're so much better. So this will automatically allow you to connect to a Wi-Fi network to make a phone call or if you're making a phone call, it'll use both cellular and Wi-Fi to give you the best connection possible on your iPhone as long as there's Wi-Fi available at the time of the call. So very important feature. Only some carriers offer it around the world. So take advantage of it if you have it. Another setting I always like to change is background app refresh. Now the reason I changed it is because of the battery life. Now applications are constantly running in the background and it drains a lot of battery. It does keep your apps up to date, but in terms of notifications, you'll still get those. So I don't keep this on in the background at all. 
only when I'm connected to Wi-Fi. Now, the reason I do that is because Wi-Fi is much faster in most cases, and I'm usually close to a power source so the battery doesn't drain as quickly. So I just set it to Wi-Fi at all times, uh, not both because of the battery, of course, and data. You also may have a tier data plan, so very important setting here to consider. Background app refresh. Another setting that's turned off by default that I think should be enabled by default. When you go into the settings, you have a few options here. Autofill Safari, which we talked about earlier, and then iTunes and App Store purchases with Face ID or Touch ID. Now this allows you to go into the App Store and simply purchase an application using Face ID or Touch ID without having to enter the password. So if I do this, it authenticates, it downloads the application, done. I don't have to type in my password every single time, which could get really, really annoying. So Touch ID and Face ID support there for the App Store. It's one thing that I always enable. Now, one setting I always turn off, and it's because I feel like it's a little bit of a violation of your privacy. It's going to be under Privacy, Location Services, and all the way down here where it's hidden, you can barely find it. Significant Locations. Now, this tracks everywhere you go. You'll see a bunch of list of things here everywhere you go at all times. I turn this off for many reasons, as I mentioned. Just really think it's a violation of privacy. And number two, it just really drains your battery as well. It's constantly tracking where you go at all times and save that data on your phone. So I just highly recommend if you don't feel comfortable with that to turn it off right away. Now last but definitely not least, one of the most important settings I think on any iPhone that I think everyone should have enabled. That's gonna be emergency SOS. Go ahead and enable all these options and set up your emergency contact and health information. Now this will allow you to set up an emergency contact, a person of choice that will be contacted in case of an emergency. It also shows things like medical conditions, weight, height, organ donor or not, and a blood type and all that information about you that can really help save your life depending on an emergency situation. So if you're on the lock screen and someone finds you in a tough situation, hopefully you never have to use it. So if I go ahead and try to unlock, of course, it's not going to be me. And then someone hits the emergency button there. You see that medical ID button on the bottom left here? This is the button that's going to show anyone how important this is. So right here, when you select your age, uh, your, your medical conditions, your height, your blood type, your contact information or emergency contact information, that's going to tell a person without having to unlock your iPhone uh, that who you are. So it's very important that everyone enables this because I think this is a life-saving feature. So there you guys have it. I hope you guys enjoy these tips on some of the settings that I enable or disable every time I set up a new iPhone. I hope you guys enjoyed it and have a great day. I'll see you real soon. Peace.